Imagine an unstable web page, then the focus could be dragged away from the Power Automate desktop execution and then suddenly we miss a few letters. It could also be that we want to do this input validation because of compliance, we need to document what our workflow actually do and that it actually types in the things that we want. Let me give you an example. I go to a web page here that could be Google. Can also be any system, for example, employee ID, first name, some field that we need to type in. Google is just easy because we have it easily accessible. So here I want to do a search. Let's say that I want to search for my company, that is Anna Jensen Org. But for some reason, this web page is unstable and it takes the focus away from here and then it does the search. Then we will get faulty results or system entries. So we want to check if we tell the robot to type something in, we need to check is this the thing that actually gets typed in. Let me show you how easily that is done in Power Automate Desktop. So I build a new flow here. Let's have a set variable where we will store a fixed value in that will be the Google search term. I will, in a real life scenario, this will of course be an iteration or something if we need to type a lot of records in, but for now it's just a fixed value. So here I want to say search term and I put my search term in, which is an Jensen org. Then I can click save. I also want to launch the new web page. So here I'll find a launch new Microsoft Edge, feel free to take Chrome, Firefox as well. Then we need an initial URL that will be HTTPS google.com and I'll click save. So we want to do a check X times that could be three times. We want to check if we're actually typing in an Jensen org. So for that, we'll find a loop condition. We will let it run an unlimited amount of times here in the beginning, and then we will change it to only run X times, that could be three. So what you do here is to say true, equal to true. You can also say two equal to true. I just prefer this notation, and then I'll click save. So this loop will run forever. Let me just click run to show you what's actually going on. We're opening a web page, and then we have created an infinite loop close down the web page again, you can see here it just um, goes on and on. I'll click stop. We need to fill something in this loop. So what we're going to do here is to populate a text field. So find a populate text field on web page and drag it in here in the loop condition. Click the UI element and then click add UI element. Here we will find this text area here. Click the control and with your mouse, we have created that UI element. What are we going to put in? Well, we're going to put in the search term. So click this X here, double click the search term, we'll click save. We're also going to extract whatever we typed into this field, we will extract that out because then we can compare, is this really what we have typed in? Is that what we wanted? So you go up here and then you'll find an extract data from web page and drag it in here. Here, this will uh, be stored in a data from web page variable. That one is fine. So what we need to, we need to tell Power Automate Desktop where is our data. So go open up a web page with Google. Here we have the text area and that should be fine. So find where you want to extract from, then right click extract element value and pick the text. There you have go right now to understand snork, but it could be anything. So we'll click save. And that's it. Let's set a breakpoint here. So we only do this one time. So now I am launching a web page, I'm typing something in, then I'm extracting what's actually have been typed in. So if I go back to my flow, I can uh, stop it here because we had the breakpoint. So we can see that the search term is under Jensen org. And then we scrape the data with the data from web page. And we have the result here in a data table. Yes, it is in a data table. It would be nice if it was just a text variable. So what we need to do here is to take the data from web page and say we want the first row that is index zero, a data table is index zero. 
and we want the first column again index zero. Then we can compare these two. So um, that's what we're going to do here. So let's take a set variable and store that value from here. So up in variables, I will after the extract data from web page, I will have a set variable. I will call this extracted search term like this. And then I just need to take the data from web page, go find that. And then I want to say 0, 0.0, that will be in hard brackets. So now I have stored that in the extracted search term. Now we can fix the loop condition because we want this loop to run over and over as long as um, these two are not equal to each other because then we want to try once more. So open up the loop condition. Instead of this true, true, I want to let this run as long as the search term is different from the extracted search term. So find a not equal to and have an extracted search term. We will click save. So right now we can try it. Let's try to simulate an unstable web page because if I click run here, then you'll see that this will actually work. Let's just do the actual thing first. This one works. And if I click stop here, that will stop the loop. But Instead of having the breakpoint here, let's move it up here. So right after this extract, um, right before this extract from web page, we will fill in some um, different data. So we should run this loop again. Then it will look like this because now we will simulate simulate an error. We will have this Anna Jensen org. Our flow stops now. Let's just try to delete something and then click continue here. And then you will see that our flow runs once more. Try it again. We can do this. I can click run. Now it runs once more. It tries again. And let's just, we, we, we can see that our input validation now works. It stops. So that one is great. I can remove this breakpoint. And if I go to the search, we can see that we actually did the Anasian snork. The other ones are from our previous runs. We can uh, delete these Googles if that makes a little bit, a bit, a little bit better overview. We also want to say, well, these input validation, this should not be running like a thousand times because if we try like three or five times, um, maybe with a little weight, then if that's not possible in our system, then we don't want to process more data. So we will need a helping variable for that. So use a set variable and drag it in before the loop condition. We will call this one loop index and we will give it value one because this is the first iteration. I'll click save. Then we will add one to that loop index in the end of each of these runs. So I'll copy it, paste it in here and say loop index, I'll say loop index plus one like this. So now we add one to it, we can open up the loop condition and rewrite it because this one, this search term not equal to extracted search term, we can write this in a different way. And that comes handy. So let me cut this extracted search term. And up here in the first operand, I will do the not equal sign here, paste in the extracted search term and remove these two percentage signs. Then I'll say equal to true. So what I did here was just to change the condition. It says exactly the same. It says that if these two are different from each other, if that is true, then we want the flow to run. But this lets us add another condition and add condition. And here I can say the loop index should also be less than or equal to, for example, three. So now uh, this one will run, run as long as these two are different from each other. And the loop index is also smaller than or equal to three. Otherwise, I want this to stop. This will not, not succeed. So then I can click save. And let's actually have this breakpoint here again. So when I click run here, 
we can do um, some erroneous run. So right now we want to test if our loop counter works. So I'll do this. I'll just remove one um, one here. I can add something like this. So right now we're doing the in input validation three times and then our robot should stop this loop like here. So now it stops, it worked. Then finally, we might want to do after this loop, we might want to have a condition that says, um, is the loop index really four? Because then we know that our robot falls and we might want to throw an error here. That can be done very easily. So if we find an if up from conditionals, we have an if here, then we'll say the first operand that is loop index. If that is equal to four, then we know something is wrong. You can easily just do what you want here, throw an error. If you want to see this in a much larger workflow implemented very well with all the best practices, then this video is for you. I also think that you should join the I Love Automation Discord community. It's free. We are more than 8,000 RPA developers helping each other with our Power Automate desktop solution and our careers.